What is up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to the Matt Ramon Show presented by Quick Trip. Let me talk to you about Quick Trip real quick before we get into this guest. We have a good guest today, people. Josiah. Dude, I've been saying this name wrong. Okay. Josiah DeGuara. Dude, you know, you know what's messed up? Like, I, I know that I, I, I know dude's name, right? But like, I was practicing it so much because I didn't want to get it wrong that it got in my head and I started saying it wrong. And I had to like, get good. Like, if I don't know how to say a, a player's name, like, I want to make sure I pronounce it right when I talk to him. I think it's disrespectful, you know? Say their name wrong. So I'll watch YouTube clips of them making a play and then the, the announcer say his name. But like, I, I make sure I get it right, you know? Because I, I, mean, I was saying Tanya's name wrong forever. So like, saying a player's name wrong on a, on a podcast just uh, like, freaks me out, you know what I mean? I don't want to do it, you know what I mean? But uh, we got DeGuire in the building, number 81 for your Green Bay Packers. Had a great fun chat with them. Talked about a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff past, a lot of stuff present. We're gonna get this thing this year. But before we get into it, let's talk about Quick Trip a little bit. As I've been telling you, Quick Trip has their own podcast, the Quick Cast. You can get it in all the places that you listen to podcasts. Uh, and and and, and you know they talk about Quick Trip stuff. You know that they have a lot of cool guests on that thing. You should check it out. And also they got some new merch. They got some spring merch, which I should be wearing. But I want to give a big shout to Whisk Camo. Uh, they're on Instagram, they're on all the social media stuff. They sent me a nice little package, so big shout out to them. But uh, n- next time, I will be wearing my Quick Trip merch. Just ordered uh, the red sweatpants. You know, I might do a little twerking video, you know what I mean? Represent Quick Trip the proudest way I can, you know what I mean? But uh, Quick Trip's got some great merch. Go to quicktripmerch.com. That is quicktripmerch.com. The link is in their bio on Instagram, all their, all, all their social medias. So check it out, quicktripmerch.com. Get yourself some people. They got some great merch. You know what I mean? I, 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 dude, I, dude, I represent. But you know, even sometimes like when I'm like out and about and like I'm at a place like Quick Trip isn't close by, so I got to go to some other crap gas station and I wear the Quick Trip. Like just so you know, I, I would rather be a Quick Trip, but there isn't one in this <laughs> this trash town. So I'm going <laughs> to come here anyway. But you know what I mean? Let's get into this thing. Mr. DeGuara, uh, number 81 for the Green Bay Packers. Fun chat, dude. Such a nice dude. Such an awesome guy. You know what I mean? Uh, and we have another great guest next week. Dean Lowry is joining me. All right? You know what I mean? Usually I don't announce it until I got it locked in. I mean, it's locked in, but it, it's scheduled. You know what I mean? I try to get it done before that in case something pops up. But Dean Lowry will be on the podcast for next week. Uh, dude, it's awesome. Like talking, be, being in a position to be able to talk to a lot of great players. You know, we got Preston Smith. We got Adrian Amos. We got... Uh, Kenny Clark was in the building. All right. We had, uh, and then, and now we got DeGuar. We got Lowry. Woo-wee. And, uh, you know, big shout out to all the people that are taking the time to talk to little Matt Rabbit and the Matt Rabbit Show. Let's get into this thing. Go, Pat. Go, people. I hope you enjoy the little conversation. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> let's get into this. What is up, everybody? We have a fantastic guest today. Uh, Packers tight end, Josiah DeGuara. Hopefully I nailed that name. I've been practicing it. How you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate you taking the time to, to come in on, on your offseason. Uh, how is your offseason going for you? It's going great, man. Uh, just got back into Green Bay on Sunday, actually. Um, but I was, I'm from California, so I was out in California, Arizona, West Coast, living out there. So, man, just been grinding. It's been great. I actually got engaged um, two All weeks right. ago. Congratulations. Yeah, so that, thanks, man. Yeah, so that was awesome. Um, but, yeah, it's been great. Had a great off season so far, but it's good to be back in Green Bay getting some work in with, with all the guys. So what's that like? Because our the Green Bay winter it isn't, is, isn't going away. Like, it's, like, a little stubborn. So what's that like coming from? Going over, you know, being over there and then coming over here is, I mean, it's not like it's freezing, but it's not April weather. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I took off and it was like 80 degrees and then I landed here and it was snowing. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. I'm not used to snow in April. I mean, I went to, you know, I went to school in Ohio, but it's not, it's still different out here. Having it snow in April, I've never, never seen that before. So it'll take some getting used to. I'm ready for the heat out here for sure. Yeah, for, for sure. Like, I, I cannot wait for this. Because even Wisconsin, like, we're kind of used to it. April's always 
like you know it's nice a few days it's we don't have april showers and bring may flowers and all that but uh, yeah. but what is um exactly the workout a, a lot of you guys are back in town we got volunteer workouts for like everyone who doesn't know like what happens in april like wh what are those workouts yeah man so right now it's just kind of like introductory back um back into the offense we get to meet with our position coaches for a couple hours a day um don't get to do anything football related on the field so we're pretty much just here meeting with the meeting with the coaches um, meeting with our position coaches and, and working out and we got field workouts um we're you know we're throwing with the quarterbacks a little bit um as offensive skill players and then um just pumping iron man you know just doing the off season yeah. stuff um, but yeah, right now it's real chill. We're, you know, we're just meeting and working out. So nothing, nothing crazy yet. All right. Yeah. I, I was always, cause like, I know, but I don't know. Cause like, I know like obviously like training camp and like the later on, like June, July, those type of stuff. But like this workout, like I wasn't really sure. I think a lot of fans will be interested for that. Like, but yeah. for this podcast, I wanted to like, let the fans get to know the players a little bit. I, I had some other guys on try to, get to know things maybe like you know because like the media doesn't ask all the great questions you know what i mean like mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean they're, they're they, good. Ask the, they ask the fun ones <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, uh so you were born in, in california right yeah i was born in northern california yes sir. it's wild because I, I was like researching like you know and uh, you were born in 1997 and i was like i was a teenager <laughs> so, yeah whenever no, i talk I to you like... guys and i look at that stuff i'm like and I'm so old, like. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I mean, I was just back in Sacramento um, at a little, like, youth conference thing that a church put on. And the speaker was, like, having people raise hands of when they were born. And some people there were in high school, born, like, late 2010. You know what I'm saying? Like, close yeah, to 2010 so... and stuff. So that's crazy to me. So I feel what you're saying a little bit. Yeah, because when people talk about the 90s, it, to me, it doesn't seem that long ago. But it, it really was. But Yeah, uh... exactly. So growing up, who 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 was your team like as a kid? Uh, football team. I grew up as a Raiders fan. Yeah, so my whole family is from a town called Fremont, California. It's like right next to San Jose, and uh, so I grew up a Raiders fan. My whole family was Raiders fans. Um, just being so close to Oakland, my mom was born in Oakland, so being right there. And then we moved up to Sacramento when I was like eight, so which is a couple hours away from the Bay Area. But I grew up a uh, grew up a Raiders fan and a and a San Francisco Giants fan. So. Who was like the the guy like uh as a kid? Like when I was a kid, like I, it was like it was Don Mikowski. I'm not sure you heard of him, but he was a quarterback before Brett Favre. But mm -hmm. I like th there's a couple other guys, but who was the guy that that you watched as a kid that you know that just your person? Yeah, I mean honestly, I remember um a quarterback like Rich Gannon was a big name. Um, I remember Charles Woodson playing for the Raiders. Um, obviously, he was a great player for the Raiders for a long time. Um, guys like that uh, were the two that stick out to me right now. You know, I was wasn't like super devoted, but I'm a, I was a big Raiders fan. But those are the big names that I remember. Um, I mean, Jerry Rice played for the Raiders a little bit. He was a Niner guy, obviously. Um, but just being in the Bay Area, those are those are a couple. Jerry Rice is probably the biggest of of me growing up. Yeah, like you mentioned Charles Woodson, and I think that that's wild because like you you were watching him growing up. And you just missed him, like I mean, yeah. it's not like he just retired, but you know, not a crazy long time ago. I, th I think I think it's wild. Like a lot of you guys watch guys and then end up being on the field with them sometimes, or you know, uh, playing with yeah. in the league at the same time, and like a guy that you were watching when you were, you know, ten or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, cause yeah, cause Fre I mean Fresno State. That's only I, I wanted to go to Fresno State um, coming out of high school. So it's only three hours from where I grew up. So I watched like Derek Carr and Devontae when they were at Fresno State because it wasn't far oh. from my house, you know. Um, so, yeah, coming full circle, getting to be teammates with, you know, Devontae last couple of years. It's pretty cool when that stuff like that happens. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. Uh, so were, were you like always a tight end like in, in high school? I know a lot of in high school kids, you know, that they, they play a lot of different stuff before they get locked in on what they're going to do. No, I wasn't always a tight end. I mean, in high school, I played mostly receiver. Um, towards the end, like towards my senior year, I played, I mean, like everyone, I played quarterback growing up, <laughs> yeah. um, which is the story of a lot of guys. And then high school, played all receiver. And then when I, closer to my senior year, when I knew I was going to have to play like tight end in college, um, started putting on a little weight and put my hand down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I was mostly, 
you know, a receiver and then tight end a little bit towards the end of my high school career. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that, that, that is similar. Like I asked everyone, except for like people who are like just so gigantic, like, uh, yeah. Like Preston Smith. I'm like, you ever quarterback? He was like, no. <laughs> yeah. But it's so common. Like when you, when, when the coaches are putting trick plays in or something, everybody wants to, everybody brings up their old quarterback highlight tapes from back in the day, like trying to, <laughs> trying to get the ball in their hands. Yeah. Cause I, I remember a time when, uh, they were talking about like, a, I forget what team it was. The quarterback got hurt and they didn't have a lot of quarterbacks behind them. But they're like, mm -hmm. oh, but this receiver played quarterback and this receiver, this tight end and this running back. Like everyone played quarterback at some point in their uh, career, whether it was high school or maybe even some in college. Exactly. But, uh, but now you're a tight end in the NFL. Who is your Mount Rushmore of tight ends? Like who are the, the greats? Maybe you watch film on, maybe you just idolize them growing up or maybe, you know, whatever, how, how it works. But who do you got? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I went to school in Cincinnati. So obviously Travis Kelsey is a big Cincinnati alumni. I watched him a lot. Um, just going to Cincinnati for five years and him having so much success in the league, watched him a lot. Um, I think right now, you know, Kyle Juszczyk is a similar, he plays a similar position, you know, that tight end fullback role a little bit, um, plays similar to similarly to what I play. So those are two big guys right now that I watch a lot, just the mixture of how they play. Um, but obviously Kittle, I mean, if you go back, Tony Gonzalez, Jason Witten, those type of guys. Yeah. Um, but right now, those those Kyle Juszczyk and being able to have a little bit of a relationship with Travis Kelsey coming from the same school, those are two guys that I kind of watch the most and, you know, try to learn from. I, it, it, it's, it seems to me like tight ends I, – I think it's Kittle who has a tight end school or how, how, however they phrase it. But it seems like mm -hmm. the tight ends in the NFL, like, are, like, all helping each other. Like, I've I seen – a. A thing on Kittle, and I know Tunyon's good friends with Kittle, and they yeah. they work out. And it seems like a lot of the the great tight ends, uh, all like all work together, try to you know help each other get better. Yeah, it's a unique position. So I mean, because uh, we do a little bit of everything, right? Because there's so many different body types and type of players. Like for me and Mercedes Lewis to be in the same room together, you know, it's kind of you don't see that in a lot in the NFL. Just two huge, hugely different body types being in the same room and um, doing similar things, but. Yeah, people always tight ends always come together and try to make each other better, and I think that's what's great about the position. Yeah, I I I, I couldn't agree more. Tight ends are like like a utility knife. Like they do so much. Like you have to you know be able to catch, block, do like all of the and then like just huge huge guys you have that that you guys have to block. You know what I mean? So no uh, doubt. So who like when you got to Green Bay, you got drafted. You got drafted. Uh, by the Packers, who was like one guy like right away where you're like, I can't wait to meet this dude or to play with this dude. Uh, who do you got? I mean, obviously with, you know, Aaron being the person that he is and the player that he yeah. is, I obviously it was, a, um, it's been great to, you know, get to play with him. And obviously coming in as a rookie, it's like very intimidating to have like him and then Mercedes, those two like 15, 16 plus year guys. You know, I always say that like, it's very uncommon for a team to have two, 16 plus year guys and then on the same side of the ball you know what i'm saying so yeah um, those are those are two guys that it's you know it's been great to just learn from and they have so much wisdom from all the years of playing um, so those are probably the two and then obviously Devonte, um been great playing with tunyon and everything and um the whole offense is is awesome to be a part of but those are two guys just with the experience they have it's it's a it's a little different they just have so much wisdom yeah i think uh I, obviously rogers is is rogers he's uh He's gonna do his thing, and uh, but like Mercedes, I think like coming in like as a tight end and having him is like, I think that'll be like a dream come true. Like that's like the perfect situation because you have someone who knows everything. And obviously, I'm a fan. We don't know, but everyone says how great of a leader he is, and I believe him. Uh, so like yeah. having a guy like that who knows so much and he's a leader, uh, I, I I think that that's perfect situation. Not not just for you, for Tony and for everyone over there. Yeah, man, he's an incredible leader. It's like it's like having another coach in there. Um, and then like having a coach that's still doing it, you know, that still knows the ins and outs of the game um, and does it at a dominant level. You know, he's the best run blocking tight end in the league by far. So, um, yeah, just you have an open mind whenever he whenever he's talking, you you uh, take the sponge out. You act like just a sponge and absorb everything because um, he's obviously not going to be there forever. So you got to take as much as you can. Yeah, I, I, it seems like he hasn't played in forever because like I remember him playing like I felt like I was young then. <laughs> I don't yeah, like, yeah. I'm young well, anymore. 
So, uh, dude, so, it's like he pulls up his highlight highlight tape from college, and you're like, you know, you're trying to you're trying to see it, but it's it like, on a potato. <laughs> yeah, dude, it seems like it's so long ago, you know. But it's like when he was drafted, I was like six or seven or something like that. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's so that that is so wild. So I I want to talk about about your college days a little bit. I I, I did a little bit of research. Mm-hmm. You went to Cincinnati, so yeah. like uh. And no disrespect against the quarterback that you played for, but Joe Burrow was considering transferring to Cincinnati. It was between LSU and Cincinnati, I was reading. So, and, and like I say, no disrespect to who to who you played for. I'm not a big college guy, uh, mm-hmm. like, knowledge-wise. Uh, not, not that I know anything about the NFL either. But, <laughs> but what, <laughs> what would that have been like, you know, because Joe Burrow is Joe Burrow, if, if, if you would have had the chance uh, to play with him. Yeah, I mean, you never know. You know, you. I remember... I think that was because we had a coaching change my sophomore year when Luke Fickle came from Ohio State. Uh, so I think that's why he was kind of considering it. Um, but you never know, man. You know, Things could have turned out way different. You know, you never know what could have happened. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the player he is now, I got a couple of buddies on the Bengals and, you know, just rave about how great of a player he is and stuff. But, yeah, you never know how it would turn out if he came to Cincinnati. But we, we ended up having um, a couple good years in a row my last two years. So it worked out pretty well for both of us. Yeah, I, I I think it worked out for everyone. I, I thought that was an interesting question because I actually know someone who's a Cincinnati fan, a buddy of mine. He told me to ask you about Skyline Chili. It, yeah. It, that's like a a huge thing in Cincinnati, is it? It's huge. Yeah, you got you to gotta try it. Skyline Chili is it's the best. I try to tell anybody that goes to Cincinnati, you got you to gotta try it at least once. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm craving it right now. I, I'm probably gonna go to Cincinnati <laughs> during these OTAs. I'm gonna take a weekend and go to Cincinnati and get some Skyline. Um, but yeah, it's I love I love it, man. But it's definitely an acquired taste, and people have different opinions on it for sure, <laughs> depending <laughs> on who you talk to. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I want to ask you that. And then you're like, no, you you got it. It's like you know, everyone in Cincinnati knows. They'll know. I don't want to ask you, and you're like, what are you talking about? What's happening here? <laughs> no, it's it's a there's one on every corner, so you you definitely like know what it is. in Wisconsin. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So it, it, is that just like a like a, a just like a chili shop, or like is it like what yeah, kind of so stores? I mean, they just it's like chili cheese dogs. They're called cheese conies. Um, but the chili's just different. Like, it's, like I grew up, you know, my a lot of my family's from Louisiana, but I grew up with like the thick, you know, beans and um, meat, like that kind of chili. But yeah. it's not like that. It's more of like a sauce. All I right. kind of describe it that way. But they put it on, you know, chili cheese dogs, spaghetti. They put it in like bur- <laughs> they put it in. But they put it in burritos. They call them chilitos <laughs> and like all this stuff. And <laughs> man, I love it. Just talking about it, I need it. <laughs> that. That that's actually hilarious because I I wasn't sure about that question, but uh so you, you you played at Cincinnati, you get drafted, but so what was your draft day like? I I always I think these stories are, are usually interesting. Sometimes uh not as much some guys like you know Joe Thomas was fishing, which I think is yeah. you know cool in its own way. But what was yours like? Yeah, well mine was right during COVID. You know that's when COVID. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So I was uh I was gonna have like you know a bunch of people there, but um i just had like my close family and friends i really i think there might have been 10 15 people and um it was i mean it was awesome and i wouldn't have had it any other way um but yeah i didn't know if, you know if i was gonna get drafted second or third day so um but i ended up getting drafted on day two and then my family threw me like uh like remember during covid they were having like those car parades because you couldn't yeah, have yeah. like yeah like just to be like safe or whatever so you couldn't Cause we didn't want to throw a big party in the middle of COVID, you know? Yeah. Uh, so they, they threw me one of those car parades with a bunch of people that I knew. So that was cool, but yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, that was my like, fam- peak, my family went that crazy. was like peak COVID too, right there. That was like at the the height of it or whatever. Yeah. That oh. was only like a month later. I would, I was supposed to be in Cincinnati and ended up going back home for it just because COVID and everything. So. Yeah. It really screwed up your whole vibe there. Uh, that sucks for you. <laughs> no, hey, I, I wouldn't have had it any way. You can't complain when stuff. Yeah, when you get drafted, you know. What's that feeling like? Like getting drafted because, like, there's like so much work, like just from get from high school to college, and then you know to do your thing in college where people notice you and they want to, especially you know the third round draft pick, you know. So like, what's that feeling like? Just like everything that you worked for, like, dude, you know. You did it, you know, or not that, not that it's done, but you know what I mean? You got to that level. 
No, yeah, that's not exactly what I was going to say. It feels like all your work come to fruition, man. It's all paid off. Um, like you said, not that the work's done. Like, I still have a lot that I want to um, do in my career and a lot of things that are unfinished in my mind. But just to get to that point, you know, it's a, it's a huge, huge moment in everybody's career. I think everyone would, ag would agree with that. Um, it's just another stepping stone in the direction that you want to be. But, yeah, you can't that, – that's a moment I'll remember forever and, you know, super blessed. Um, that God put me in that position to to be able to have that moment. So I'm just grateful for it. Yeah, that, that that's all. I have no moments like that in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have one, man. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I I don't, I don't know. I, 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 when I was in school, I wasn't. Uh, I, I, my kids did a lot better than me. I made sure of that. <laughs> you know, I was kind of an idiot. But uh, <laughs> you from Wisconsin? Yeah, I, I'm from Wisconsin. I, I actually grew yeah. up. Half in Green Bay, half in like Fond du Lac, which is like close to Milwaukee. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, I, I grew up. I, I actually never left. Hardly, I, I hardly ever leave Wisconsin. I go to Michigan, go to the Kmart. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> That's the reason. I'm so so sheltered in Wisconsin. It's I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do better at that. Me and my wife are talking this summer, try to like expand our horizon. You know, especially with COVID being done. When you're told you can't leave, then now you, now you kind of wanna. <laughs> yeah, it's every it's everything you know. I know what you're saying. It's what you what you've always known. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it is, and I I love Wisconsin, like Door County, like you know AJ uh, Dylan. Yeah. He's a mayor. I, I knew about it way before he did. Uh, <laughs> Door County is great. Like me and my wife go there every year. And it's a great spot. But like, uh, so your first season, like you mentioned, COVID, it was kind of a weird, and then like you, like all the fans were like jacked for you. I think I remember, you know, I'm on a Twitter and I'm on all the things. Everyone's like, oh man, this rookie, you know, he's great. He's going to do big things. And then you end up, you know, getting hurt, obviously. So what was that like for you? Like going through like in training camp and doing all the things to get ready for the season and having that setback and just going through all that. Yeah, it was tough, man. It was, uh, it was definitely a disappointing moment. It's obviously a part of the game, you know, um, but in the moment, it's obviously very disappointing. Um, but it happens. It's part of the game. And you got to learn from it and move on. And I've uh, it's made me a better player. It's made me a better person um, mentally, physically, and everything. Um, it teaches you not to take advantage of certain things. Um, it's taught me a lot of things. Um, and, and like I said, I'm a, I'm a better player because of it and a better person. And, um, you know, I am obviously wouldn't have gone through it um, if if I chose that route, I wouldn't have picked that yeah. um, ending for me for that season. But you know, it happened, and and I learned from it, and it's part of my story now. So um, I just got better because of it. But obviously disappointing at first. Yeah, I I, I was I me I remember being very disappointed because uh, I, I remember like you know every, every, everyone was excited and everyone loves Tunyon, but we were we were uh, we we were ready for it. Uh, so, like, what is your NFL highlight so far? Like, you're gonna have a lot of, lot of great things happen for you. Like, so far, like, what was like, 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 like your favorite one? Like, you went home and like telling, telling the family, like, oh, I just did that thing. Man, um, there's so many. I mean, obviously, like my first game as you know, even though I really only got to play one game my rookie season, I didn't know that at the moment. Yeah. Um, but like, my, but that first game, you know, all the nerves and everything leading up to that moment. Um, that's a great, that's a great feeling. And then my first touchdown, um, my first game and my first touchdown were both in Minnesota. So um, they, they both happened at the same spot, not the same game, but yeah, those are probably, I mean, those, those two firsts are pretty cool. You know, you always got to enjoy those first things because they only happen, you know, yeah. for the first time, one time. So um, those are probably two moments that I look back on. That I'm like, wow, that you know, those are amazing moments. But um, obviously, winning the winning the division this year was was awesome. Obviously, the season didn't end how we wanted it to, but to be a part of you know such a successful team and actually be, get to play you know a decent amount um, throughout the season and be a part of it, unlike just watching it my rookie year, um, just being a part of that successful season. Uh, so those are probably a few things that have stuck out to me so far, and you know, hopefully, got a lot more to come. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think you have a. A lot more to come. I, I I was at that at that that last game, and those were my best seats I ever had. I was in the end zone. Uh, the, I, obviously, that game didn't end how I anyone wanted it to end, but that was a that was a great game. I mean, like fun wise in the stands, mm -hmm. that was a that was a, I, I had a few adult beverages that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, I'm yeah, sure but, everybody did. <laughs> so, 
Speaking of game days, uh, what is your game day like routine? Like, do you have a set routine or do you just kind of like, I mean, obviously I'm sure it's somewhat, but like, what do you do? I do have a set routine, you know, depending on morning or night game. Um, but I always show up uh, around four hours before game time. I like to take my time, man. That's one thing about me, like whether it's showing up to the facility tomorrow or game day, like I like to get there early. So I'm not, I don't feel, I hate feeling rushed, you know? So yeah, yeah. I, I like to take my time. So get there, you know, take my time eating my, you know, pregame meal, listen to some music. Um, I always do like a little devotional and then I read, uh, read something before every game, you know, just kind of, kind of gets me in that mindset um, to go out, go out there and get ready to play. Um, but besides that, you know, the normal pregame routine, you know, I'm getting, getting stretched, getting ready out, out there on the field. I always go out for a little five, 10 minute warm up by myself and then obviously come out with the team. But, um, those are probably a few things that I do uniquely, but besides that, nothing, nothing crazy. So what are you listening to? Uh, honestly, I love like gospel music. So I'm big into gospel music. Um, there's a couple, uh, Christian rap artists that I really like, like KB and NF is a big one that people I like, I like NF a lot. Yeah. Like NF. And NF is awesome. So I listen to a lot of those guys. Um, just, just stuff with good messages, man. Get me in that right mindset. Um, but I love, I've listened to the same like pregame warmer song since, um, the beginning of college. So I have like the set playlist that I've listened to that kind of gets me in the zone. So that's, that's yeah. a little bit of what I'm listening to. Dude, and then it it's so funny you said that about like listening to things that get you in the right like mindset. I try to to tell my son that I'm like, if you're listening to, I mean, I, not that I listen to everything and it's like great. I listen to some horrible things, but like when I'm like going to work, I want to listen to music that like is like uplifting, whether it's just fun music or whether it's whatever. But like, yeah, when you listen to things that are like negative and dreadful, like <laughs> you go to work, yeah. and, like you know, you're, yeah, like. Yeah. I'm the same way. I always start my day with, you know, some worship music, just something like you said, that has a good message um, going into the day. Like people that like listen to hardcore rock or hardcore rap, like on their way to work at like 6 a.m. I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand those people at all. Um, so yeah, I feel you on that, on that side. Yeah, because yeah, I listen to message. a lot of, I'm sorry, I, I listen to a lot of nineties rap, but not on the way to work. Cause I'm, I'm, yeah. I can't be about that life that early. <laughs> yeah. Once you, once you wake up and then, then I understand. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, what is something that you think people or, like, fans don't know about you? Like, you don't have to give some dark secret, but, like, uh, what is something, like, do, do you, like, collect anything? Like, do you, do you do anything that, like, just fans would have no idea? Man, um, I think, uh, do you know, you know uh, Johnny Cash, right, obviously? Oh, yeah, I love you Johnny know, Cash. You know, you know his song, Folsom Prison Blues? Yeah. You know that song? So... I grew up in Folsom, California, and Folsom Prison was like two minutes from my house growing up. Right. So the so that song where he sang that Folsom Prison Blues, that's uh that was like literally in the in my backyard. Like prisoners would escape and like try to run through my neighborhood growing up and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. So that's where that song is based out of Folsom Prison in Folsom, California. So that's a little fun fact people might not know. You know, take yeah. it as it is. If you're not a Johnny Cash fan, but if you know Johnny Cash is. It, it's funny because when I was a kid, my mom was a big Johnny Cash fan, Elvis, and all those all those guys, and I never really got into it. But then I, I saw the Johnny Cash movie, and I was like, that story was like really interesting to me. So I went and like down, that was back when you could just steal music. I went and downloaded <laughs> all, all a bunch of Johnny Cash music. And I was like, wow, I really like this, you know. And yeah, uh, like, he's a great the, artist. Folsom Prison Blues is a song that I usually sing at karaoke. Maybe had a few adult beverages and that's yeah. like whenever i go to karaoke it's Folsom prison blues i know all the words by heart i, I love that song <laughs> yeah it's a it's a go-to for sure always always got to play it when it, when i researched you a little bit like where where you you know the city you're from i saw it's at Folsom high school and i was like i wonder but i was like eh, you know i'm sure there's a lot of you know that Folsom yeah. around maybe not but uh yeah, same place the, so like people just were escaping from prison every now and again <laughs> <laughs> i mean that it wasn't often, but it happened maybe a couple of times because you can either do that or jump in the river. So you got to pick your battles if, if you're escaping, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, it's a it's a funny story. Yeah, that that is uh, that is wild. But, uh, well, I, 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 I appreciate your time, man, and I hope that you, you kill it this year. Thanks, man. I appreciate it for having me on. It was, it was fun.
yeah, you, you, you're, you're welcome back anytime. All right? and, yeah, uh, yeah, no doubt. All right. Have a great year. Have a great off season. And uh, c- congratulations to you on getting engaged. And uh, go kill it this year, my man. I appreciate Thanks. your time. Go pack Thanks, go. Brother. Go pack go. God bless.